Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. So guys, today we have a 2016 Toyota Camry SE with the beautiful 2AR FE four-cylinder. Folks, in my opinion, and I've made this recommendation before, this is one of the best used cars to buy in the Camry lineup because this is still simple. It is a DIY car and still doesn't have too much technology where it's complicated, but it has enough to make it nice to own and if you take care of these cars and specifically this engine it could last a very long time without major issues and this specific one this 2016 Camry is a one owner car it has just over 40,000 miles and it is in beautiful condition it's really been taken care of and the owner brought it in here today to do the transmission fluid and the induction service now the transmission fluid we've covered before i leave the link in the description for how to change the fluid on these with the sealed transmission which is actually not sealed but the induction service is what we're going to talk about in this video because i have some concerns about it but before we get started if you're new to the channel welcome consider subscribing to the channel check out some of my other videos if you are a returning subscriber well thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and without further ado let's get right into it So the induction service or the fuel injector service, is it legit or is it a scam? Yes and no is the answer to both of them. Because the problem is people in their mind and when you get something from Toyota that says fuel injector cleaner, we're not really cleaning anything with injectors because honestly, the injectors back in the olden days, they used to get dirty because we used to have bad fuel and all this mess. We don't really have that anymore. And the last time I've seen a Toyota injector get clogged is a very old car that's like 20 years old, 25 years old. So you're not really doing much with that. But the main thing is these induction services, which basically, even though this says fuel injector cleaner, this is an induction service. Basically, this is a very harsh cleaner that will break down the carbon, any carbon buildup on the, on the valves, any carbon buildup in the combustion chamber that is excessive, it'll start breaking it down. But the key word here is excessive because if you already have heavy carbon that is caked on there, you are gonna have to literally take it out to a grinder and you'll barely get it off. You're not getting it off with this. So the idea of this is prevention. You're trying, when it starts to build up a little bit, you're trying to loosen it up and let it go so it wouldn't build up to something harsh and starts affecting the way the car runs. But the problem with that is the interval. What's a good interval? So let's talk about that. Because some dealerships will tell you every 25,000, two years, every 50,000 miles, two years, every whatever uh, money they need to pay their bills at the dealership. Honestly, that usually it comes down to that. It just seems like when the dealership is slower, all of a sudden every car needs an induction service. When they're busier, they just don't care anymore. That's unfortunately the way it is. So after watching this video, you will actually have an idea of when it actually is needed and when it's not. The main thing about induction service that you need to be aware of, it has to do with how you drive your car. If you're always driving on highway, if you have a heavy foot, if your car never sits, it has high miles, you're always driving, driving, you likely don't need it. Because the number one cause for carbon buildup in, and we're not talking about direct injected cars, we're talking about these, the non-direct injection either. It's the same thing. Believe it or not, these cars will build up carbon too in some conditions. If you drive very low miles, rarely go on the highway, you are always driving short trips, less than five miles, cold weather, never really letting the car warm up fully, you could potentially start building up carbon early. So in only those cases, when you're driving short distances, never really letting the car warm up, rarely take it on the highway, and when I say rarely take it on the highway, you're not at least going there once a week and continuously driving it for a while under load, then you might be, it might be beneficial to consider it between 25,000 miles, 50,000 miles to do an induction service. And when I say consider it, it is not an absolute requirement. That is 
something that no dealership will tell you. You have to do it is what they're going to tell you. No, you don't have to do anything. That's the truth, folks. So what we're going to do with this car, just so you can actually see how carbon will look like. This car has 42,000 miles. We're going to take the spark plugs and we're going to put an inspection camera into the cylinder. We're going to see what kind of condition actually it is in. Because in my book, when you recommend an induction service, you have to do this. Do we even need it? The only way you know is by looking inside the engine. Now, I understand this is not something feasible because, well, in order for a technician to take the spark plugs, put the camera inside this, well, that's all time spent. Who's paying for that time? So it's going to be like, well, we're going to charge you to inspect it, but if you don't need it, then we're going to still charge you. And most people will jump up and say, well, that's a ripoff. Well, that's how this works. That's where it's a double-edged sword, where you're either going to say charge and not do it or charge and do it. So most dealerships will just go, okay, we'll just do it. At least we did it. See how this goes. But if you're DIY and you're considering this, you definitely want to look inside the cylinder. So let's go do that. We are using a new camera. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I have one inspection camera, the Boroscope, that I really like. This company sent me this thing, Test Long, the company. I usually don't like to do a standalone video in, in things like this because we can actually use them in other videos. So we're gonna test it out here. I will put the video on the side so you can see what I'm seeing here. Okay, let's go cylinder number four. Would you look at that, folks? This is a very clean cylinder. I mean, if your piston looks like this, do you see the edges? I'll put arrows in the editing here. If you see this piston, you can read the letters off of it. Do you see that 2L? This is a very clean piston, folks. This is a car that doesn't have barely any carbon. And some people will look at this, including the owner. You know, we were, we were looking at this before we filmed this video. I just wanted to show him what's going on. And he was like, he was looking at this, but it looks dirty. Folks, remember, this is a combustion chamber. This is not a dining room table, if you would. It's going to have some stuff, flakes mainly, but... What really will tell you the full story is when you switch, and by the way, this camera, you switch here, the view, this has three cameras instead of two. Look at this valve. I mean, you can read the lettering off of it. It is extremely clean. And these flakes that you see, or that dirty side, if you would, that is completely normal. You see that, this is completely normal. Look at the area, I'm gonna to try to spin it. Look at the area between the two valves. That is extremely clean. You see color. This is what matters. This is where carbon would build up. Let's switch it to the other side. This is the other valve. You can read TE, Toyota exhaust. That's the exhaust valve. Look how clean this valve is. This is incredible how clean this engine is. And look here as we, as we spin the camera, some of that. These are all flakes. This is the kind of flakes, you know, I've taken these engines apart. When you see these flakes, you can just pass your finger over them and they'll just fall off. This is normal. You'll find this in every engine. And further down the engine, look at this beautiful, beautiful cylinder wall. There's not a single point of wear on it, nothing. This is really good. Let's go to the... Let's go to the other cylinder, cylinder number three. This one, the piston is up. And we're not going to be able to see a lot of it, but same thing. Look at the edge of the cylinder. You can see the piston. There's very little of those flakes. Let's look at the valves. Look at that, folks. You can read. If your engine looks like this, I can clearly read T, Toyota, I, intake. This is the intake valve. And you see the flakes over there. This is completely normal. This is extremely clean. And let's flip the camera. Look at the exhaust valve. Look at that TE. That's, this is a very clean valve right here, folks. We can't go a lot in the cylinder and see the crosshatch, but again, this is very, very nice. Let's go look at cylinder number two, which is also all the way up. This one is the same thing. You see all the flakes on it. And here's an open valve. You see how clean it is in the back? And the face, of course, is clean. You can clearly read the letters on it. Let's 
look on the other side. Exhaust valve is the same way, very clean. We have those flakes, those flakes are not an issue. You see that little bit of oil sitting there? That is because the car sat outside for a little bit, and then we started it, drove it in and shut it off. This is how carbon actually starts to build up. You see that wetness, that oil that just sits there. If you do short trips, you're gonna see that oil all over and that oil eventually will cook and that's what's gonna turn into carbon buildup everywhere. This is because we drove it a short distance, but typically this car, I can see that it's not driven like that. It's not driven a lot because it has low miles, but it's driven longer trips when it is driven. Let's look at the last cylinder. It's number one. Again, we have the same story here. You could see the, uh, the kind of the material of, this, of the piston. There's not really covered with a lot of stuff. Let's flip it. Here is that intake valve. Same thing, we have all the flakes. This one does have a little bit of carbon on the side, but I am not even concerned about it because it also looks like it's flakes. Here is that exhaust valve. Look how clean it is. Usually exhaust valves will remain clean even in direct injected engines. But this is, and again, we see that oil there. And this one we can see in the cylinder, look how clean that crosshatch is. You see those little scratches, that's actually not an actual scratch. This is just a kind of a haze. So, let's talk about this because we're actually gonna, this changes the trajectory of where we're going with this video. So folks, we are actually not going to do the, the injector cleaner or induction service on this car because I spoke with the owner. I basically told them, it's your car, it's your money. You want to do the induction service, but based on the things that I'm seeing here, you don't actually need it. Everything is clean. Car doesn't burn oil. You have, you have taken care of this car. And now with concrete evidence, of looking inside this engine, I can tell you with a good conscience, you don't need it because there's nothing too clean. These flakes, if we do the cleaning, they're still gonna be there. Perhaps if you take this car on the highway and beat on it a little bit, kind of an Italian tune-up, those flakes will fall off, but then the next week that you drive it, it'll be back. That's just normal. Every single, you, you take a brand new engine that has, been, that has 100, 200 miles on it, it's gonna be the same way. And that's just the norm. So after consulting with the owner, we're not gonna do this. In conclusion of this video, I want you to know this. This service is not a ripoff, but when you do it and you don't need it, it is a ripoff. This could go both ways. People could show you that, oh, look at all the flakes, look at all that carbon. You need to clean your, your do the induction service. No, you don't, because that's how engines are supposed to look like. Remember, this is not a dining room table. This is an engine, there's combustion. You're gonna have these flakes all over, that's normal. And looking at this spark plug in this car, it has that white tint to it. That's, that's how this spark plug will look like after a couple days of driving when you install it new. That's normal, engines will have that. And now that you've seen this, this engine has 42,000 miles, it has had an induction service done once, but does it need one today? It actually doesn't. And that's the God honest truth, folks. So when you, you're going to a dealership and, oh, the car is six years old, we need to do an induction service, did they check? They did not. I, I will tell you, I work at a dealership. They don't. And you spend, now the prices of induction services are going up, you're spending $200, $250 maybe sometimes to do this. What did you gain? Nothing. That's the God honest truth. If you do need it though, if, and I'll show you an example of this exact engine when it's carboned up like this. Now this is an extreme case because this engine was burning oil. Actually, this is an engine I rebuilt on a video that I've done in the past. I'll leave it in the description. That kind of carbon, you actually can't clean with these. You just can't. And that's, that's the reality of things. Direct injection will always build up carbon. 
not in Toyota land because we have dual injection, but in case you're watching from another manufacturer, direct injection, directed engines will always build up carbon. There is no way around it because you have that oil, slight amount of oil in the intake, it's going to come on the valves, and if you do short trips, it's just going to turn to carbon. There's nothing to wash it off of the back of the, of the valve. But even if you have a little bit of buildup, it's not going to be a problem until that buildup gets big enough where it's restricting the flow of air or affecting how the valve is sealing. And if it doesn't do those two things, it could look horrible, like this one. This one is actually out of a Toyota Yaris IA or the Mazda 2, whatever you want to call it, the P1 engine, I think it's called. This is actually a perfectly running engine, but the valves look like that. Again, if it doesn't affect the flow of air and it's not affecting the seat seating of the valve, it's not going to cause an issue. So this is how I want you to do this. If you drive your car regularly, you're driving 10, 15, 20 miles every single day to go to work and back. You're not really driving short distances where you start your car, you drive a mile, shut it off, then start it, drive a mile, shut it off continuously. Like let's say you live very close to a train station, you drive your car, leave it there, take the train to work, come back, or you're retired. And this is where this is this becomes interesting. You're retired. You don't drive your car much. You know, you're staying home, you're resting. Then you drive two miles to go visit some friends or go to the supermarket, then come back home. And then you don't drive your car for another five days. Then again, drive it very close, go visit some family, two, three miles, come back. This is when carbon potentially will start building up. Because as you've seen in this engine, that oil that sits at the top, because we drove it, we let it sit outside for a bit, then we drove it inside that's going to start building up the carbon, even in a non-direct injected engine. And that's when, when you see, when you see those slutters on the valves that are starting to kind of disappear because there's a carbon buildup, then consider induction service. But otherwise, don't, because it's just a waste of money. Just like I told this customer, I don't recommend you do this because you don't need it. If you want to still do it, it's your car, your money. And they actually, I'm glad that they listen because that's money down the drain and I don't like it. So we're not doing the induction service on this car. We're just going to do the transmission fluid and off we go. And something interesting with this specific car. As soon as I told the owner that we're not doing the induction service because it doesn't need it, do you still want to do it? He said, no. Great. I'm glad that he made a good choice. But then he told me, I want to replace the drive belt. My first question is, as a mechanic, why? Why do you want to replace the drive belt? What's wrong with it? He says, well, it looks a little old. Well, I'm going to show you a picture right here of how this drive belt looks like. And this is another example of how mechanics, unfortunately, will get you, if you would. They say this drive belt is glazed. To me, the only thing that's glazed is a donut. Th that drive belt has its appearance because it actually drives on the backside as well because the water pump is backside driven. So it's going to have that appearance. That's normal. Does this drive belt have cracks? No. Does this drive belt have dry rot? No. Is this drive belt 20 years old? No. So why are we replacing it? This, we'll be back to the same question. And as a mechanic, here is the irony of this. I make a living fixing cars, but I just talked myself out of doing the induction service, which I was charging the customer for. I talked myself out of doing the drive belt, which I could have charged and made money on. But you know what? I'm doing the transmission fluid, which is due in six years. That is a good maintenance to do at this time. And then when this customer leaves, happy that they did not spend a lot of money. They spend less what they came in to spend. I will go at night sit with my family, and then when I go to bed, I will sleep with good conscience, knowing that this car is safe, this car is good, and that, to me, is worth more. And you know what? This is the irony of the automotive business. If everybody would just stop looking at numbers and just wanting to do work, do work, and, and get their numbers up and look good, they would actually make more work because this customer will bring me this car back again and again and again, and it's going to need maintenance, and at some point, it's going to need some work, and we'll take care of it. But you know what? This is what I stand for, and I wish all automotive technicians, and I know a lot of them that do. If your car needs $7,000 worth of work, it needs $7,000 worth of work. It is what it is. But if your car does not need $1 worth of work, then it doesn't need $1 worth of work. doesn't matter. That's just how it is. 
Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative, and I hope as a DIY mechanic, if you're watching this, this is how you decide if you need induction service or not. I hope this gives you a reference. If you're not a DIY mechanic, I hope now you're, you're, you have a better picture of these induction services that every single shop and dealership is trying to sell you. Do you need it or not? This is the only way you will know if you need it or not. There's no mechanic that will tell you just by hearing the engine and listening to it if you need it or not. There is no such thing. And any mechanic that says otherwise is welcome to comment below and enlighten us if you would. But honestly, from the real world, there's no other way. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.